So I'm talking about living with Asperger's, or as I put it, also known as living in an alternate reality. Um, I have my Twitter handle there and my email. I'm very happy to talk to people afterwards through those mechanisms or any other, or you can find me on LinkedIn easily. Um, I like what Albert Einstein said, reality is merely an illusion, a very persistent one. So how did I realize I had Asperger's? There was a TV campaign when I was 37 years old and they brought up five questions on the screen. It says, have you got this, this and this? Um, and I said, yes. And they said, you might have um, Asperger's. And I turned to my wife and I says, everybody has those, well, my fiance at that stage. And she said, no, I don't have them. That's not normal. Um, and so, or, or words like that. So I went and got diagnosed by a clinical psychologist and who confirmed it. I always did know that there was something different about me. I didn't quite fit in. I wasn't like other people, particularly as a childhood. In the childhood, I had sensitivity to fabrics, textures, foods, um, all of those things. Like um, I would bring home my lunch and not eat it from school because uh, my mother assumed it was because I didn't like the food. And I said um, I didn't like how the, it felt. And she didn't believe me, um, but it was, you know, I didn't like the texture of the food in my mouth. Um, I had a lack of coordination and motor skills. It takes me a long time to grasp a physical task. When I get it, I am fine, but, um, you know, it takes me a long time. My driving instructor asked my parents um, that maybe he could stop teaching me as it didn't seem like I could learn to drive. Uh, but then I did finally click, though it took two or three times as many lessons as, norm, as neuro, you know, neurotypical or normal people. So childhood, um, I was a late developer, which is very common with autism spectrum. I um, didn't walk until just after two years old. I was put in a mental health ward just uh, um, around the time I started walking because they thought they, that the word they used at the time was retarded. Um, and that they said I would be in a mental institution for the rest of my life. And at that stage, New Zealand mental health system was very primitive, and they just basically let my mother see me once a month for the few months that I was there, and they assumed that I was just going to be like that for life. Um, I was, you know, primary school was fine, you know, from that's 5 to 10 in, in New Zealand, where the 13 to 17 school I found um, very hard, the high school because that is when you start to make social interactions and that is not what I was good at. I, I was obsessive. I read encyclopedias from the beginning to the end. I compared one year's phone book to another to see who had moved house and what were new people and things like that. Um, the encyclopedia might have been useful, but the phone book knowledge wasn't, um, yeah. So body language, I had to learn to look at people in a conversation. I didn't realize that was I was meant to do that. When I got clinically diagnosed, that's the, one of the first things I learned when I started reading books. Um, and then I realized when they said to look at people, I thought it was the mouth I was meant to be looking at because that's where the words came out, but it was meant to be the eyes. Um, and I didn't realize that. And that was when I was 37 years old. Unfortunately, when I'm feeling awkward, I smirk. And that doesn't help things because, you know, when it's a bad situation, people think I'm smirking at them, which tends to escalate things and not do it. And it's an involuntary physical reaction. Um, tone of voice. I have to spend most of the time trying to make the right tone. It is not natural for me to give um, <clears throat> intonation in my voice. It becomes a monotone in my voice, especially you know, because I, if I'm tired, I'm not my, making an effort to do it. What people will um, often say um, who have some form of what's called a disability is we call it masking. You know, you're covering up your behavior. And even people like people who are of, of different colors, people of different sexualities will often do that to so to show that they fit in. And, 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 and most of my day-to-day -day interactions with people, I am masking. Some good things. Um, if they, they took an IQ test when I got my diagnosis, I was um, five standard deviations above mean, meaning basically they couldn't measure my IQ. I was above 180. Um, and that is useful when I went to do things like my PhD, for example. Um, however, you know, if you measured me on emotional quotient or EQ, you would find it is um, 
much lower and be below normal, although I've learned to adapt and learn the rules of society. But that has been very much learning rather than having it as a natural thing. Um, communication. I can take things a little literally. Um, I've got better over time. Um, and that means that I can also be a bit defensive because of that. One big myth that I'd like to dispel is a lot of people say people with Asperger's don't have feelings. That's not true at all. We may not express it on our face, but we're just not always able to express things. Um, and so people assume that we had lack of feeling, lack of empathy, but it's more a, a communication disorder rather than a lack of feeling. I muddle my words and sentences all the time. The, thirds, the thoughts all want to burst out at once. You know, it's sort of like a verbal explosion half the time. Um, I tend to keep talking too long. I don't notice when others have had enough. I often over talk when there is a conversation. So I'm not always aware quite how to communicate correctly. When is the right time? When are people getting bored with what I am saying? Hopefully that's not happening right now. Um, some not so good things. Um, sometimes uh, trivial things will upset me. You know, there have been many times in my life where um, you know, things cause me to get upset or cry or whatever or have a meltdown. And people are saying, why are you doing that? And I explain and they can't understand that something trivial has done it. Like if sometimes if I have something in my morning routine go wrong, then that can really disrupt my day. And, and I can just sort of sit there and not know what to do next because I do things in a certain way. Um, yeah, I get flustered quite easily and have to mask. Aspie rage is a term that's used, um, Aspie being the nickname for Asperger's. Um, this doesn't happen anywhere near as much as it is now. It's a, you know, also known as a meltdown. You've seen probably the pictures of children in a supermarket just screaming on the ground, lying down on their back. That is an example of a, of a meltdown. Um, yeah, there's certainly, until I learned to understand myself, I would do things like I was never violent towards people, but you know, I'd hit wall or hit the walls or shout or get angry and things like that. But now I've, you know, because I've read a lot since I got my diagnosis 13 years ago, I've now been able to understand myself a lot better and I can understand why people aren't, you know, why my communication is failing. Um, relationship issues it is, it has been hard in the past. Um, you know, not currently, but in the past, um, you know, I had a first marriage where I was a victim of um, physical abuse, um, domestic abuse. And that is actually, when I've researched, it's quite common with people with autism and Asperger's. What I will say to you is if, if you're on the autism spectrum or Asperger's, if you have somebody hitting you, beating you, um, yelling at you, swearing at you nonstop, those sort of things, depriving you of things, that is not okay and you should leave. It took me, um, I, I wasn't aware that I had autism at the time, it took me several years to leave a situation like that. That is not okay and get help in whichever way you can because that is quite unfortunately far too common. It is the same for everybody who suffers from that, but you know, it is very common. I have a short attention span at times. I flick between things a lot. I'm not so good at finishing things off. Um, yeah, I do wonder at times whether I have ADHD or mild ADHD, but I haven't sought a diagnosis for that. It is a common comorbidity or common condition that occurs alongside Asperger's. Workplace. Um, yeah, people with Asperger's are very reliable. You know, being highly intelligent meant technical roles have worked well. Um, you know, I don't always pick up the social cues and interactions in the workplace. I find it hard sometimes the, you know, water cooler conversation or the small talk where everybody's meeting. I find it hard at physical meetups um, where I have to wander around the room and talk to people. I'm not quite sure. Am I allowed to talk to this other person because there's two other people talking? Do I walk in? Do I not? You know, once I'm starting to talk, I'm fine, but, you know, it's hard otherwise. Yeah, and it's been hard to understand the expectations of my manager at times. And, you know, a couple of times I've been fired. Um, a couple of times I've come close to being fired um, or, or forced to resign because uh, technically I wasn't fired. I was asked to resign. And that 
you know, was when I actually made a decision, when it started happening again to me after I understood what was hap- my condition, I actually, um, um, I told a, my manager who was getting ready to put me on a performance plan and then um, burst into tears and he was quite shocked. But then we worked together and it made the world of difference. And I wish that I had done it many years ago. This was only about three or four years ago. And then we understood that he had to, you know, we worked together so that I understood when he wanted things done and how he wanted things done. Because I found that managers weren't consistent. Some would want things, you know, and then change their mind and say something else the next day. And they'd forgotten about the thing in the past where some would go back and say, that thing I meant a week, said a week ago, I actually meant it. So... You know, that is where I've put in a lot of effort to try and understand expectations of my managers. And my managers have been pretty good at understanding me as well, I must admit. So being a um, manager, I've been a manager since um, 1994, a long time, many too many years. Um, and one thing is that what I found is that I didn't naturally do it. And I had my very first time as a manager, my manager, he was coaching me and helping me quite a bit and gave me some management textbooks. And I went and bought about 20 management textbooks in the end, and I just read them cover to cover. And what I learned is that, in effect, I turned management to um, into a science, basically. I worked out all the things you need to do. And what I ended up doing was, because I couldn't naturally understand, I put in place systems so that I could understand other people and um, schedule things and make checklists and things like that. And I have had, over the years, I've managed hundreds of people, and I've probably had about... 20 or 30 people say to me, you're the best manager I've ever had. And that's just because I've had to cope and make adjustments and that's become turned in from a weakness into a strength. So um, other things that, that might be um, SB uh, related, I can be very contrary. Um, I always take the, the different viewpoint or other things, you know, other word for it is uh, a devil's advocate. So if somebody comes up with an idea, even if I agree with them, I'll try and say the opposite and pick, you know, the holes in their um, discussion or argument. So I, I do that a lot, which can be both good. It brings strength to a team. And I think, as everybody knows, having a diverse team gives a whole range of opinions and improves the outcomes. But it can also be hard and people get frustrated. I was, for example, and I also, when I was reaching a certain point in my career, I stalled in my career, people told me to go do an MBA. I had many people told me to do that, but I didn't like that um, because it didn't sound like me. Um, so, um, and, and, and an MBA is a good program. I'm not trying to say bad things about that, but it wasn't for me. So I went and did a PhD instead. Um, physically, I am um, very restless. I can't keep still. Um, you know, whether it's in the office at home, I have to walk around um, all the time. Um, you know, I'm always um, moving. I tick, um, you know, and that means involuntary movements. I'm scratching my head all the time. I am um, moving my leg. I'm doing those sort of things. It is um, very close to Tourette's at times. I don't quite have, I have, I would call it controllable urges. It's not uncontrollable because I can't, um, you know, I can stop my actions. For example, I was brought up in the church in New Zealand when I was young, and I always wanted to take off my clothes and run down the aisle because I knew that would be an absolutely horrific thing and everybody would be shocked. Um, but I didn't actually do that. Um, I want to swear at the most inopportune times um and you know most of the time that doesn't happen so but it is right on the edge there and my i always wonder whether you know i see that i'm getting more physically restless i wonder whether some of the other compulsions will actually change whether they'll get better or get worse i I actually don't know as time goes on so um you know i like the little slide um the picture there that i found and it's a good summary of um how I am and how I've learned to, to be myself. After a lifetime of failing to be normal, I finally realized I excel at being an Aspie. And, and so I would say the message to that I would give you is to be accepting of yourself and, and use your own abilities to your best advantage. And I think that was my last slide. Yes, it was. So I will stop presenting. Um, oh, yes, I have stopped presenting. 
Now, I started a couple of minutes later, so if there's any couple of quick questions, then I'm happy to answer one or two quick questions, otherwise can answer in the break or offline. Thank you, Ian. That was really, really insightful. And I very, very much agree with your last message. When I realized that my chronic illnesses actually helped me to be better in some areas, for example, be a better manager, that was a, 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 like a very, very important moment for me. Yeah. Uh, so if there are any questions, I didn't see any questions pop up during Ian's presentation. I did see, I've got one there about five books would you most recommend oh. to learn management skills. I, mm -hmm. I'm showing my age a bit. I read a lot of the um, Stephen Covey books, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which are like management. Um, I liked um, Jim Collins' books, um, and I am... It is many years since I read them, so I'm trying to think of some of the others. Um, I, I can look them up if you, I will put my email um, into the chat channel and you can email me offline and I can send some. One that I'm liking at the moment is um, Drive, which is understanding the motivations of people and what um, how to motivate people when um, you're not in a sort of strictly controlling environment. Um, did I have to relearn masking after you got diagnosed? No, I actually was aware um, that I was masking a little bit. I masked more after I diagno was diagnosed so that I could fit into people more because, yeah, I started looking at people in the face. I started trying to vary my voice. I didn't do a lot of that beforehand. I was aware that people were getting bored with me talking on a topic they weren't interested in so i was doing it more we had one other question i read that sign language interpreters on television irritate people with autism how can the barriers for both autistic people and deaf people be broken down in case of television broadcast um, it doesn't annoy me so i can't talk to that one sorry mm -hmm. but i think everything is i mean we we, as I say, if you live in a glass house, you shouldn't throw stones. I mean, some things annoy me um, at times, and then I learn that I should accept. The people who annoy me the most are actually other autistic people uh, because of their peculiarities. Um, so um, hopefully I'm not offending any of you here, but, um, so, but I've learned to accept everybody as they are. Mm -hmm. We've had also a question if you did the PhD full time or for some time. I'm, I'm, I think he, that person means maybe part time. So did yes, you do it part -time? I started off um, full time, but the, um, the government um, cancelled the research funding, so I had to get a job. Um, and so I completed it part time. And I also happened um, to relocate countries in the middle of it. So instead of being three years, it took me eight years, including the suspension of the time and everything. It's not necessarily the way that I would recommend, but it worked out okay. And we also have the question of, could you speak on how the Asperger's definition is used or not nowadays, as it has been changed recently as far as I understand? Is yeah, correct. Um, the, Amer the standard diagnosis is in a um, American Psychologist Association APA book called DSM, which I'm not sure what DSM is, stands for, but I was diagnosed under DSM-4, and then um, where Asperger's and autism were, were two separate things, um, where you would probably call it high-functioning and low-functioning autism now. The, in the fifth edition, they removed autism and Asperger's altogether or merged them together. I can't quite remember what it is. There has been a lot of debate about it, and most people have disagreed with it. I have, my understanding is that they're talking about adding it back in under... Um, DSM-6, which I don't believe has been published, but I'm not sure. But I think it, it was a mistake. And I think I also think it is often a mistake to um, to link low-functioning and high-functioning autism together, even though there are similarities, I think. This is my all my personal opinion, but I think that it is a um, separate things. And autism um, physically is largely about how the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brains are connected or more to the point, not so well connected is a lot of the scientific opinion. Mm 